long as we're writing songs and performing the way we hope is up to standard. The death of Christine McVie, a legend of rock music, was a real jolt for the entire music industry. A wave of sadness spread across the fans of Fleetwood Mac. People were shocked and grieved all across social media. Let's dive into the particulars of this shocking incident and uncover the true facts behind the death of Christine McVie. Early life and love for music. Christine McVie was born on July 12, 1943, in Greenod Village. Her birth name was Christine Ann Perfect, and she was raised in a family full of music and magic in Bearwood. Near Birmingham, Cyril, her father, besides being a violinist, was a lecturer and teacher. It was her father who passed on to her the passion for music. Beatrice, her mother, possessed a medium's intuitiveness, as well as a faith healer's energy. Christine's childhood was filled with music and mystery, which was originally introduced by her grandfather, who was an organist at Westminster Abbey. Christine's musical voyage started at the young age of four, when she began piano lessons. Nevertheless, it was her 11th birthday that her life changed completely. It was this time when her brother John's musician friend helped her dive into music. She devoted herself to classical education and continued to do so up to the age of 15. Another thing that sparked her passion for music was her brother bringing home a Fats Domino songbook. All of a sudden, the classics that she knew turned into the crazy and vibrant sounds of rock and roll. While she was growing up, The Everly Brothers were one of the musical bands that strongly shaped her musical preferences. This mixture of a disciplined classic and a savage attraction of punk created a solid foundation for Christine's music career. It is very well possible that the family setting of artists and spiritualists formed the basis of her artistic thinking and creation. Christine was acquainted with music from a very early age, mixing the different worlds of notes and tunes. This wide range of experiences was eventually reflected in her musical pieces later on. Early Music and Chicken Shack the life story of Christine McVie, a young aspiring art teacher who wanted to become a famous figure in the music world, is one of talent, timing, and rebirth. She took advantage of the opportunity to learn and refine her artistic skills at Moseley School of Art in Birmingham, where she was also immersed in the new blues scene that was just emerging in England. The fusion of art and music led not only to an unsuspected but also advantageous shift in my work focus. She got acquainted with the band Sounds of Blue and its members Stan Webb and Andy Sylvester during art school. Realizing Christine's talents, they called her to join the band, which was her first experience in music performance. This period was indispensable because then she experienced the crux of the band's essence and the blueprint of the genre. As for her work with musicians, it did not stop there either. She had a collaboration with Spencer Davis as well, which only helped to consolidate her position in the music industry. Later, after graduation, Christine moved to London. It was all a part of the harsh realities of the art world's financial expectations. She worked at the department store as a window dresser. However, this short stopover paved the road to her success in music. Sylvester and Webb finally put together Chicken Shack, which therefore became her new stage of life. The band was in search of a pianist. Christine was able to grab this opportunity at the right time. Being a piano player, a keyboardist, and a backing vocalist with Chicken Shack was a solid way to express her versatility and great passion for the blues. The single It's Okay With Me Baby from Chicken Shack not only featured Christine, but also the songwriter, who showed her songwriting skills. Her musical contribution greatly matters, with her switch being adored and her voice adding realness to the blues sound. The band's smash hit, I'd Rather Go Blind, in which Christine was featured, was a turning point to her becoming a force to reckon with in that era. This recognition in the Melody Maker Award as the UK's best female vocalist is indeed the greater proof of Christine's constant influence and success as a female performer among her male colleagues. Nevertheless, a personal detour occurred in her life in 1969, which was the beginning of her career. Career. Her marriage to the Fleetwood Mac bassist John McVie was complicated because both kept on playing live with their own bands, leaving them with no time together at all. Christine's decision to quit Chicken Shack was based on her commitment to her marriage, evidence of how personal conflicts and professional aspirations can interweave in the music industry. The transition between Christine's early career and her growth as an artist involved considerable self-discovery and maturity. However, she never gave up and followed her life path despite the odds. Each step of the way was instrumental in her development as an artist who started in art school, to her launching the music genre in a small venue, Sounds of Blue, and later working with Spencer Davis's band and other talented musicians like John Lees. Her adventure from the arts to music was a vocation change that resulted in her synergizing all her creative abilities to create an art of mixing the visual with hearing art. It is truthful when she says that the pool of skills that she acquired at Chicken Shack was the largest one that she had for singing ever since. For example, not only did she improve her writing and instrumental skills, but she also learned to have a greater command of 
of her vocal performance at that time. Hence, her talent gained her the award of the UK Female Vocalist of the Year. It made it evident that she was about to become a legendary musician and one of the performers who left their marks in the history of music. While on the one hand, it wasn't just the technical skills that made her stand out as a great musician. It was the fact that she was able to discover the deeper emotions and tones of the blues that distinguished her from the others. Whether she prioritized her marriage in the process or continued to work at the chicken shack, she clearly defined the personal hardship that came along in the path of achieving a successful career. Joining the Fleetwood Mac Christine's time at the Fleetwood Mac Band was truly zigzagged with talents, passion, and eureka moments that would have sealed the band's destiny. In the later years of the 60s, Chicken Shack's concert trips introduced her to the same Blue Horizon label, the group Fleetwood Mac. The way their paths crossed seemed to be more than a coincidence. Later on, their collaboration became an event that redefined the musical style of rock. Christine hopped on with the group Fleetwood Mac, initially functioning as a studio musician and also playing the piano on their second album, Mr. Wonderful, during which she revealed her true virtuosity. Her skill and passion were recognized, leading to her invitation to join the group. This happened when Peter Green left at the beginning of 1970. Her efforts started not when she joined the gang. They go far behind when she sang and played guitar on the Kiln House album. However, she was not awarded a credit, even though she also participated in making the art for the record. Christine was not only a simple addition to Fleetwood Mac, her arrival completely transformed the band. Christine, a huge fan of the Fleetwood Macs, especially liked the Peter Green era, became comfortable with the band very easily. She successfully set herself up as a necessary and crucial member, so that there was no gap in filling Green's musical spot. She was emotionally linked with the other band members, and so connected to each other through the tough times. She was proven an instrumental factor in the group's alteration of sound. Her keyboard, songwriting, and powerful vocals gave them the unique touch they had been missing. The legendary album, Future Games, was the beginning of her work with Fleetwood Mac as a formal recording, and Bob Welch and she were the pioneers of the period. The leaving of Welch and making her move to Southern California in 1974 with the band marked the beginning of creative resurgence by Stevie Nicks and Lindsey Buckingham's joining. It was this ensuing compilation of stages that formed this unique mixture of voices, and it was Christine and Stevie who came to epitomize the Fleetwood Mac sound with their harmonies. On their self-titled 1975 album, Christine's songwriting was prominent, and hence the two songs that she pioneers, Over My Head, and Say You Love Me became sure hits that defined the style of music they are globally known for. Her uncanny ability to craft songs that would come to sound as if they were a part of the listeners' lives was unrivaled, and the magnitude of her efforts inevitably became a critical factor that contributed to the rapid rise of the band to the heights of their success. Rumors, an album by Fleetwood Mac in 1977, had Christine McVie with her hit songs You Make Loving Fun, Don't Stop, and The Beautiful Songbird. These singled out her undisputable hand in songwriting and hence became the best-selling album of all time. Her marital separation from John McVie created turmoil inside her, but this didn't stop Christine's creativity. She gave birth to other singles. One of them was Think About Me from the Tusk album. Indeed, the old hit song Hold Me with her complicated personal experience with Dennis Wilson was much remembered in the Mirage album in 1982. Christine had her own great success with the 1984 album Christine McVie, which had singles like Got a Hold on Me. Her 1986 marriage to Eddie Quintella and co-creation with him gave even more force to the great Fleetwood Mac's creation, Tango in the Night, which was a big hit again. Unlike her fame and success, her personal life and experiences of Christine had the most crucial influence on the evolution of her music. Her father died in 1990 during the Behind the Mask tour, which caused her to disconnect from performing. She remained an active member of Fleetwood Mac and contributed to albums like 25 Years the Chain and Time. In the mid-1990s, Christine was reunited with the rest of the band, which led to the recording of The Dance, a live album that proved popular and spent some time on the US charts. The Dance testified to the permanent status of Fleetwood Mac and its members on the music scene worldwide. Despite the fact that she chose to step down on touring with Fleetwood Mac in 1998, owing to her phobia of flying, her connection with the band and the industry she left behind is eternally etched. Taking a semi-retirement Christine McVie had planned to come back to the rock stage following a concert in 1999 for Fleetwood Mac. Back home, and away from the glamour and spotlight in which the band was heavily imbued, she missed her family and childhood. This was the beginning of her longtime absence from Fleetwood Mac. Even after she stepped out of the public limelight, McVie's musical acumen was honored by the University of Greenwich, where she was conferred a doctorate in music in 2000. 
That award was a recognition of her impact on the music industry. Five years after Fleetwood Mac, McVie's private life had another turning point when McVie and her husband, Eddie Quintella, broke up. At this point, McVie deviated from the path set by the popular music that she was accustomed to before. In interviews, she declared that she had turned to a classic FM radio station and finally discovered and fell in love with classical music, which was totally different from her rock music background. Despite the departure, McVie was unable to sever the links to Fleetwood Mac. She participated as a session musician on the last studio album of the band Say You Will, which saw the light in 2003, the year when the group decided to go on a break. And that same year, McVie went to the London Farewell Tour performance of Fleetwood Mac's Say You Will. She stayed in the shadows, only as an observer, maybe contemplating the past but happy with the direction she chose to take. Nevertheless, her solo venture flourished for a brief moment with the release of her third solo album, In the Meantime, which portrayed her talent as well as her energy and enthusiasm for music as before. In 2006, the British Academy of Songwriters, Composers and Authors gave McVie the gold badge of merit to celebrate the years she had spent making music. The very same year, Paste magazine declared Lindsay Buckingham and Stevie Nicks, together with Fleetwood, to be among the best living composers. That was a turning point in the music industry that recognized how significant her impact on music was. News of Fleetwood Mac's tour in 2012 had fans buzzing with the idea of McVie's return. Nicks actually had a chance to talk about this issue, reassuring fans that McVie had not left the country since 1998, and it was unlikely that she would join the band. Nicks conveyed a bittersweet tone by emphasizing the fact that everyone in the band loved the odd McVie while acknowledging her right to leave. In 2013, McVie disclosed she was producing a new solo project, which gained the attention of the fans who had been waiting for her to come back to the music. However, the project was never executed, which left a room of mystery among the fans, who were now confused about what to expect. Her return to Fleetwood Mac. In 2013, she returned from her 15-year hiatus in an amazing artistic way that took the music world by surprise. Her involvement in the Mick Fleetwood Blues Band on Maui, Hawaii, with Mick Fleetwood and Rick Vito, a former Fleetwood Mac guitarist, was a turning point artistically for her. Fans who had desperately anticipated her return were delighted to see her again. Later that year, she joined Fleetwood Mac again on stage, and they performed at London's O2 Arena. The cheers of the crowd can still be vividly remembered as McVie, who had such a big influence on the band, played Don't Stop together with her ex-colleagues. Her return led to a huge welcome, which signified both a new life for Fleetwood Mac and gave fans another reason to celebrate together across the globe. The climax was in January 24th, when Mick Fleetwood made a thrilling announcement during a show in Maui. Fleetwood smiled widely and announced that Christine McVie was coming back to Fleetwood Mac. Through all this excitement, gossip about a relationship between McVie and Buckingham started appearing. Mick Fleetwood had indicated a possible collaboration in August 2016, noting that both Buckingham and McVie were working on new material. Fleetwood's belief in the number of available materials for the album, as well as its potential to be something larger than a duet, set a high bar on what was to come. Their work came into being in June 2017 with a joint studio album, Lindsay Buckingham Christine McVie release. The album had the single In My World, which showed both of their eclectic characters fusing them together into a cohesive sound. Fans were just happy to be able to witness their perfect music arrangements again, which they enthusiastically welcomed, taking this as an expression of their lasting friendship. The album became an instant hit with fans, and just one week after its release, Buckingham and McVie flew away on a 38-day tour, during which they sang about the band's oldies and Buckingham's tunes, and most importantly, performed her album songs live. The pair fixed up their audiences with a flawless fusion of their old and new songs, which the audiences could relate to. The band did face a great transformation in April 2018, as it was announced that they would replace Lindsey Buckingham with bassist Mike Campbell and Neil Finn on vocals. Yet, as they were evolving, Fleetwood Mac retained McVie. She maintained her trademark vocals and creative skills as one of the key factors behind their everlasting fame. Later, BBC put forward the documentary Fleetwood Mac's Songbird, Christine McVie. Therefore, it gave fans their anticipated insight into her life and career. The documentary mentioned a lot of information about McVie's life, noticing her stubbornness and an undeterred passion for music, as well as her impact on the music industry. In 2022, an album titled Songbird, a Solo Collection made its way on the charts. This was an ode to McVie's solo career and excellent contribution to the music industry. The collection revealed her shifting ability because it covered three different genres and ended up searing itself into the hearts of listeners all over the globe. Behind the scenes, her personal life. In 1968, Christine McVie initiated an affair with John McVie, the band's bass player. Peter Green, 
founder of the group, was the best man in their marriage. Instead of a regular honeymoon, the couple ended up celebrating the wedding at the hotel in Birmingham, which may be the place where they met the famous Joe Cocker, and something special happened that night. The rest of their marriage was lopsided with their total engulfment in the hectic road activities of both their own and other bands. However, their divorce in 1976 could not erase the fact that Christine and John McVie remained best friends, forming a business relationship that would last for a significant amount of time. They proved that they respected each other and maintained friendly relations in spite of the differences that they had. After Fleetwood Mac's Rumors record, Christine got closer to Curry Grant, the band's light tech. This inspired the song from the album titled You Make It Fun, You Make Loving Fun, which brings to mind the forbidden love next to an atmosphere of endless creativity. The life of Christine was interconnected with the musician's royalty when she dated Dennis Wilson of the Beach Boys, and this was when another new chapter of her legendary past was documented. Particularly, Christine became the spouse of Portuguese keyboardist and songwriter Eddie Quintela in 1986. Their companionship symbolized both Christine's new chapter and the partnership that resulted in the production of world-famous songs like Little Lies. Though their artistic alliance gradually evaporated, their legacy includes creativity, mutual respect, and recognition. In the middle of her emotional chaos, Christine went to her only refuge, which she found in the beauty, as well as in the calmness and serenity of her own home in Wickhambro, Kent. It was a source of inspiration and a place where she would escape from the demands of celebrity. She not only wrote several songs there, but she also devoted her tremendous energy to renovating the old place. Her peaceful life came to an end in 1998 when she decided to quit Fleetwood Mac to follow and take a break from being in the limelight. However, fate had a different plan, which included Christine's return to Fleetwood Mac with her fellow mates for a magnificent run of shows. Her time was divided between the stage and the whirlpool of touring, remembering the quiet and peace of the countryside. The tragic passing. On November 30th, 2022, Christine McVie, who was an essential part of the melodious group Fleetwood Mac, passed away at the age of 79. Her unexpected death hit the music industry, and fans were left bewildered by her early demise, recently shedding some light on the event itself. According to several sites like People in the Blast, her death certificate lists stroke as a cause of death, with cancer coming second. It was identified that an ischemic stroke was the primary cause. McVie was diagnosed with metastatic malignancy of unknown primary origin, where cancer cells had spread to the rest of the body from unknown origin. The exact cause of her death was not revealed till more than three months after her passing, which unveiled a new dimension in her dying day's story. At first, her family made an online announcement in which they confirmed she had died at a hospital after a short illness. Their sweet letter pleaded with people to maintain their privacy, especially during this difficult time, and to remember the extraordinary life and deeds of the music business that McVie has done. Fleetwood Mac, the renowned band that had her as a member, also emitted their deep regret over her passing. They said she was like no other, unimaginable and a very talented musician, highlighting how important she was to them. Barefoot Souls highlighted their constant companionship with McVie and thanked her for the never-to-be-forgotten moments that they created. Their tribute to McVie was a true reflection of how much she meant to them. At a celebrational life event in Malibu, the former bandmates, including John McVie, Stevie Nicks, Lindsey Buckingham, and Mick Fleetwood, all paid their personal tribute to Christine. They reminiscenced and exchanged their personal memories of the time they shared together, reaffirming the fact that McVie's influence was great and remains in their lives. Mick Fleetwood, in particular, really touched the audience with his words of grief for a long-lost friend and the influence her passion, talent, and grace had. McVie was also awarded the honor of posthumous performance at the Grammy Awards. The award-winning song Songbird was beautifully sung by singers Fleetwood, Sheryl Crow, and Bonnie Raitt as a tribute to McVie, whose musical legacy will live forever. Thank you for watching the video. Stay tuned for more in the future.